name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Father Barone, Father Smith, it's a great pleasure to, uh, to have you here and to be uh, celebrating this uh, uh, solemn high mass. And in today's mass, uh, you will notice that the uh, deacon and subdeacon are wearing what are known as folded chasubles instead of a customary dalmatic and tunical. And their use dates back to the earliest years of the church when all the clergy used the chasuble. Originally, the chasuble was a civil garment. Uh, it comes from the Etruscans and became widespread in the, in the Roman Empire beginning in the first century of our era to the point that it became an elegant article of clothing in common use. It was a round garment with a hole in its center to pass the head through, and it covered the upper body down to the knees. The chasuble then tended at the start of our era to replace the old toga, which was too heavy and less practical, to the point where Roman orators began to insist on using chasubles instead of togas when pleading cases in the law courts in order to have more freedom for oratorical gestures. Under the Emperor Trajan, the tribunes of the people wore chasubles, and Commodus ordered that those assisting public spectacles should do so in a chasuble and no longer in a toga. And the chasuble became the uh, vestment of senators in the year 382. Christians also naturally used this document, or this garment. As the chasuble became a vestment of honor for high officers of the empire, Christians sought to give their own tribunes and senators bishops, priests, and deacons, a similar mark of distinction. In Christian writings, the first mention of the chasuble as a properly liturgical vestment is relatively late. It is found in the second of two letters written by Saint Germain of Paris, uh, who died in 576, and contains a famous uh, description of the mass according to the ancient Gallican rite. He writes, the chasuble, which is also known as the amphibolus, and which the priest wears shows the original unity of all that was instituted by Moses the lawgiver. Now the law commanded that diverse vestments be made so that the people might not dare wear what the priest wears. Hence it has no sleeves since the priest's duty is to bless rather than to minister. Hence from the start it has been of one piece and not split or opened since many are the hidden mysteries of Holy Scripture which the learned priest must conceal under a seal, as it were, and preserve the unity of the faith, nor fall into heresy or schism. Nevertheless, well before this first mention, numerous frescoes, mosaics, and miniatures from the fourth century onward show beyond doubt that the chasuble was largely adopted during this era as a liturgical vestment in the East as well as in the West. And at this, this time, the chasuble was the general vestment of all the clergy, not only of bishops and priests, but also of deacons and subdeacons, and even in some circumstances of acolytes. Amalarius of Metz, who lived uh, in the eighth century, tells us that the chasuble was still worn in his time by all clerics without distinction, and it was still employed by acolytes in certain regions into the 11th century. For the celebrating priest or bishop, this vestment did not create any discomfort in carrying out the sacred functions. But the ministers, deacons and subdeacons, had to adapt to the chasuble for their purposes. They rolled back the front part of the vestment so that the arms of the ministers would be freed to handle the sacred vessels, and thus they were dubbed folded chasubles. From the singing of the gospel until the end of mass, the deacon, in order to be freer in his movements, rolled up his chasuble and slung it over his shoulders uh, like a stole. Um, the, uh, the celebrant's chasuble did not need to be folded precisely because the deacon and subdeacon would help him by lifting up its edges at certain times during the insensations and uh, the elevations. And this beautiful gesture was faithfully kept by the Roman liturgy even when it ceased to be necessary after celebrants' chasubles began to be clipped and reduced in shape. In fact, the folded chasubles worn by deacons and subdeacons were a clear symbol of their proper function as sacred ministers, that is, of their role as servants of the celebrant. Deacons and subdeacons' folded chasubles were later replaced, beginning in the fifth century, by two new vestments, 
the dalmatic and the tunical, vestments endowed with sleeves, shorter sleeves, that made it more manageable for them to carry out their liturgical and ministerial functions. Still, Rome took a long time to adapt uh, this uh, novelty, and descriptions of the Roman liturgy at the time of St. Gregory the Great still named the chasuble as the vestment worn by the pope, the deacons, and subdeacons. And when Rome finally accepted the use of dalmatics and tunicles, she nevertheless kept the use of folded chasubles for the deacon and subdeacon during Lent and penitential seasons, following generally observed the generally observed liturgical principle that the seasons considered the most holy are also those that are spared from liturgical innovations. Furthermore, the dalmatic and tunical were sumptuous vestments that symbolized joy and innocence. For a long time, their color had to be white, and ancient dalmatics were also adorned with the two bright purple vertical bands like those of senatorial togas. And during the ordination of a deacon, the bishop impl imposes the dalmatic upon him with these words, may the Lord attire thee in the garment of salvation and the vestment of joy, and ever surround thee with the dalmatic of justice. The equivalent prayer for clothing the subdeacon with the tunical also speaks of the vestimento Laetitiae. The use of the dalmatic and tunical uh, was subsequently entirely in in inappropriate for penitential seasons, during which the old folded chasuble was hence preserved. Folded chasubles were therefore used in the Roman liturgy during penitential seasons, and the exact uh, extent of these seasons can, can get complicated, but generally they would be worn throughout the seasons of Advent and Lent, except on Gaudete and Laetare Sundays. However, uh, smaller churches seem to have been dispensed from using folded chasubles, perhaps because they lacked them or because, perhaps because it was more difficult to have three perfectly matching chasubles, two of which were folded. For the ministers to assist the celebrant, it suffices that the front of their chasubles be folded, but when the deacon or subdeacon must carry out those tasks proper to them, they remove this vestment or fold it uh, still further. So you saw Father Smith uh, remove his chasuble for the singing of the epistle, and uh, 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 Father Barone for the singing of the gospel. Um, the subdeacon puts uh, his uh, uh, chasuble uh, on again um, immediately after uh, the epistle. But the proper office of the deacon begins with the singing of the gospel and continues until the end of communion. And during this time, um, he uh, would not remove the folded chasuble entirely in, in the past, but would wear it folded up and slung over his left shoulder, attached under the right arm with thin cords or even by making a knot over his stole. And after communion, he would unroll the fabric and uh, wear the chasuble folded as before. But to simplify this procedure, the custom arose of folding another chasuble in advance, which the deacon would then put over his shoulder at the appropriate time. And later on, this folded chasuble was often replaced by a simple band of the same fabric, commonly dubbed a broad stole. And you can see uh, uh, Father Barone is now wearing that broad stole. The use of actually folding the front part of the chasuble and keeping it folded with hooks or, uh, or cords uh, persisted even into modern times. A folded chasuble is therefore exactly what the name suggests. A chasuble like any other, worn with the front part folded from within to the level of the elbows and often held in place by two steel clips. Nevertheless, over the centuries, as chasubles for celebrants became clipped on the edges for convenience sake, the use of chasubles for deacons and subdeacons became definitely stitched up, and finally the excess fabric was entirely cut off. And so therefore one might speak uh, of cut chasubles uh, rather than folded chasubles, but that name has uh, remained in common use. And by the early 20th century, the use of folded chasubles had uh, disappeared in many places in France and Germany but their use persisted in Italy, in the Iberian Peninsula, and in the British Isles and in some Anglo-Catholic communities. They were entirely banished from Holy Week with the 1955 uh, reform, and violet and black dalmatics and tunicles were put in their place. 
but folded chasubles uh, continued to be used during the rest of Lent and other penitential seasons. And this anomaly finally ceased with the publication of the new code of rubrics in 1960, which stated that folded chasubles and broad stoles are no longer used. But the liturgical reformer's effort to suppress folded chasubles gives rise to a larger question that naturally emerges when one studies the liturgical reforms of the period from 1955 to 1969. These reforms were presented to the faithful at that time as a welcome return to the liturgy of ancient Christianity, finally uh, purified from the dross of the High Middle Ages and the Baroque era. But if that is the case, how are we to explain the contemptuous suppression of this truly ancient element of the Roman rite, that is the folded chasuble, a precious custom that unites us to the prayer and practice of our forefathers in the faith going back to the earliest centuries. Alas, this particular example is far from unique and it only highlights the abandonment of numerous ancient elements in favor of the purely imaginative constructs that took place during these reforms. More globally, one might ask about the nature of the liturgical reform of 1951 to 1969. Does it constitute a continuous organic development of the liturgy of the church or a radical departure with the centuries long practice of the Roman rite? It is interesting to consider uh, how in different parts of the world, tradition community, traditional communities like here at Prince of Peace are starting to again take up the use of folded chasubles. It may well be that these communities perceive that folded chasubles form part of the symbolic richness which our liturgical tradition has bequeathed to us and that we have unjustly been deprived of the spiritual beauty and benefits of that tradition. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.